Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, good night, wherever you are. Guten Tag. We're going to look at the update to planetary live stacking in SharpCap 4.1 that just dropped today, December 4th, 2023. It's amazing. Uh, let's take a look. If you don't have SharpCap yet, you need it. Uh, if you're at all into uh, electronically assisted astronomy, planetary imaging, any of this stuff, uh, if you're into and anything astronomy imaging related, you need SharpCap. So you can just go uh, use your favorite search engine and search for SharpCap, download, get the latest version, which is 4.1.11433. And first thing I'm going to do, I've shown this before. I'm still clouded out. I can't show this to you live, unfortunately, but I do have some recorded video. I'll show you that. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, cameras, test camera two, high speed. And the first thing you'll see is this beautiful, fully post-processed still image of Jupiter. Uh, it's probably from the Hubble Space Telescope or Damien Peach or somebody. Uh, your image won't look like that. I'm just warning you, but it's going to look much better than it otherwise would because of this tool. So we're going to go to testing controls and browse, and we're going to go find a SIR file. And the SIR file that I'm going to use is this one. This was provided by user DMACH, D-M-A-C-H, on cloudy nights in the major and minor planetary imaging forum. And you can see immediately the quality of this video is quite high. This is probably the best planetary uh, image SIR file that I've ever seen. It's amazing. It, it It's just unbelievable. So we're going to jump right into the tool, go to Tools, Live Planetary Stacking and Enhancement. And the first thing you'll notice is it stops wiggling. That's because we're now stacking frames. We're building up our stack depth. And uh, uh, last time I used the tool, I set it to 400. I'll just leave it there. If you want to stack more frames, you click it up. If you want to stack less frames, you click it down. So as the stack length builds, I want to show you the new features. So first of all, in the sharpening, we have our uh, old, old, <laughs> two weeks, two weeks old, uh, wavelet sharpening levels one, two, three, and four, right? And if we click those on, we can see that we can immediately get a pretty awesome view uh, of Jupiter, right? And I could fiddle around with these. I've fiddled around with these controls in, uh, in other videos, but that's not what I want to show you. I'm going to click all those off and show you the brand new, completely independent uh, sharpening method, which is a convolution sharpening method. This is uh, when I originally came up for the idea of this tool and I talked to Dr. Glover about it, this sharpening method, which is now called fine, is the one that I had in mind. And uh, the way that I had it in mind, it would just be on or off. But Dr. Glover is smarter than me, and he's turned it into something you can dial up and dial down. So I'm just going to take this tool and blast it all the way to the right. And bam, you immediately, uh, essentially one click, one click sharpening, you have uh, a gorgeous view uh, of Jupiter. Uh, and you still have this, uh, all of the wavelet controls that you had before. So you can do either one. You can do this approach. You can do that approach. Or you can get the best of both worlds. So let's, let's just reset that. And let's take this image and just make it a little, a little crispier. A little bit crispier. You can see that I've brought up some noise here. I might look sharper, but I've got some noise going on. We could either stack more frames or we've got a brand new denoise tool. So let's just take that and dial it to the right until all that noise starts to fade out. And you can do a combination of stacking more frames, using less denoise, using more de denoise, and stacking fewer frames. The nice thing about the denoise is it allows you to stack fewer frames so that you avoid uh, elongation of the moons or smearing of the details on the surface of the planet. Obviously, the, the best 
denoising is more signal to noise ratio. And that comes from stacking more frames, right? So that that's the best way to do it. But in certain circumstances, uh, I've run into the case where it's hard to stack enough frames to get a high enough uh, signal to noise ratio uh, without running into elongation. And in those cases, or smearing on the, the surface of the planet, in those cases, the denoise tool is just fantastic. It really does allow you to bring out all those details with fewer frames stacked. It's, it's a great, great, great thing. Okay, I want to show you another feature which is the auto, this is new, auto adjust brightness color. So we're just going to click that and see what it does. Oh, beautiful. Now we've got a brighter uh, Jupiter and it's better white balance than it was uh, before. So we've got some white highlights going on in Jupiter. I love that. I'm going to clean it up the way I always do. I've got some ringing going on from the sharpening. So I'm just going to take my black point, move that up a little, clip out that ringing. I can bring my white point down just to brighten up the image and I like contrast so I always take the midpoint and just move it a little bit to the right just kind of ups the drama ups that 3d effect uh, of the the disk of the planet and again if I look at this and I decide you know I got a little since I up the contrast I got a little more noise going you can just go in here and grab our oh I turned the denoise off no wonder so turn my denoise back on and boom, all that noise is gone and just beautiful. And I'm just going to jump in here and grab my saturation and turn that up to something like two. You don't need a lot on this data set. By the way, I can't remember if I mentioned it in this take. <laughs> I had another take. Uh, but if you want this exact data set and, and some others that were posted by Darren, uh, just go to uh, the Cloudy Nights forums find the major and minor planetary imaging forum there's a thread uh, by user dmach d-m-a-c-h called uh, free data free to a good home something like that and he's posted this sir file as well as others others that uh, include um, an off-center jupiter and some moons and why do i bring up an off-center jupiter because i want to tell you about another feature which is now we can stabilize the planet off center, which is awesome. If you have moons in the frame and they're not uh, nicely placed around around uh, the planet, if they're all stacked up on one side, you can get your framing and turn on the tool with this guy checked off, and you're going to get uh, you're going to get Jupiter or Saturn or whatever it is to stick uh, in the frame where you set it, rather than being driven to the center, which is great. That's another feature that I requested. Um, uh, this is fantastic. This is the new frame filtering tab. So before we had uh, the frame filtering where we can set the number of frames that we want to stack, uh, the uh, depth that we want to calculate our statistics over. Right now it's set to 250 frames. Seems good to me. You can up it, play around with it. But the great thing is we have a scrolling quality graph on the right. That quality is a measure of the input frame contrast. This is basically just what auto stacker does if you're familiar with it so you can see how tight the quality of this serve video is by the way so the the average image uh, quality is like 14.8 and the entire Gaussian goes from 14.7 to 14.9 <laughs> it's it's just unbelievable data in fact I don't need to th this is so unbelievable I don't need to throw out any frames at all that's a waste of 10 percent of frames um, so let, let's talk about some new features in time lapse, which is now we can do tif, TIFF images, uh, TIFF stills, as well as PNGs. Uh, of course, we still have SIR and AVI, but we can also now directly export WMV. That is a lossy compressed format. Uh, so it, it's not as high a quality as the uh, AVI video here, which is a lossless AVI. However, you should be aware that not everybody has the codecs to be able to view a lossless AVI, and also um, those files can be very large. Whereas the uh, uh, WMV files, that's a lossy compressed format, so those files are very small and they still look really good, and everybody can play them. So, um, uh, so that's a great option for just directly sharing uh, your time lapses that you make. Uh, another great new feature is. Previously, 
this display stretch, you know, over here where I've clipped out the, the ringing and I've brightened up the image and I've upped the contrast, that dis display stretch was live in SharpCap, but it was not written to the time lapse. That was another thing that I, I pushed for that I really wanted what you see is what you get. And, uh, Dr. Glover, uh, came through as always and got that done. So we can, uh, start our time lapses, um, and, uh, gives you new information on the screen as well about, uh, the duration, uh, of the time lapse. You can see it just got written out as a PNG file. Uh, you can pause the stacking in the time lapse, by the way, if your quality goes down, if the seeing gets poor, or if your transparency uh, goes into the toilet, you can actually pause the stacking in the time lapse. And just to remind you, this is live. This is live, live stacked. That's the unprocessed frames. That's live stacked, still updating at five frames a second. And you can't tell the difference between five and 50 or 5 and 0.5. <laughs> That's how stable it is, but it is live updating. It's just incredible. Okay, so uh, I'm going to do what I like to do, which is reset everything so I can come into everything fresh. And I'm going to switch to a different video. Let's go to here. I got a file called Good Sir Files. I'm going to go into Wide Field. I'm going to grab this guy. This is one of mine. So you can see Jupiter is smaller. It's already stable because I'm in the tool. But that's what the seeing looked like. And you'll see my seeing is variable. So I'm going to come in here and I'm actually going to turn off Stabilize to Center. And then I'm going to close the tool. So you can see Jupiter's kind of moving around. And I'm just going to go in here and wait till Jupiter's like uh, somewhere down to, down to the right. And boom. So my, my tracking was not particularly good. This was a year ago. I don't remember what the problem was. But uh, we can see in this video, let's put it to auto scale. There's actually three moons in this video. Jupiter, we got Ganymede. Uh, I'm going to guess this is Callisto. Uh, that one is dark enough. Uh, sorry, Europa. Dark enough, that one might be Callisto. I don't know. And this is probably IO. So um, we're stacking up frames. We got Jupiter stabilized. Let's go in here and sharpen it. Let's do our one-click sharpening again. And just bam, there it is. If, and if that's all you want to do, that's all you need to do. <laughs> you don't need to do a lot more than that. Uh, it's just, it's just cool. So, and I would, here's where I would look for telltale elongation of my moons. I don't see any, so I feel like a thousand frames is, is pretty safe. If I wanted a crispier view of Jupiter here, I could get it, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it. And, uh, well, it's a very fine control. I'm just going to grab that and make it full of color because that's what I like to do. So that's lots of color there in Jupiter. And uh, I've blown out my histogram. Oh, I forgot to, uh, let's just do the auto adjust. Let's see what that gets us. Mm, that kind of makes Jupiter dingy. I liked it better the way it was. Let's turn it back. There we go. I like that better. And then I'm going to turn up my saturation. And you can see that extends the difference between the RGB histograms. That's why the blue starts to blow out. But then I can just grab my brightness control and rein that back in a little bit. And then tuck in my white point, brighten the top image so I have nice white whites. Oh, that looks really nice. And uh, clip my ring. I've already got that kind of set. That's a really... That's actually a really beautiful Jupiter. I feel like I can make that a little sharper. Let's go into our level one. And one of the things, a description that I heard that made sense to me for a wavelet sharpening is to go too far and then back it off. So go a little too far and then back it off. 
You can see I've got some noise going. I could stack more frames, but I'm going to grab my denoise tool. I'm going to turn that up until I'm happy with the level of the noise. Beautiful image. Live stacked from that to that. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a little dark now. Brighten up a little, little bit. Love it. Okay. Have I forgotten anything? Turned off stabilized to center. Oh, I should talk about, obviously we still have our realigned color channels. If you don't have an AD, ADC, you should have an ADC. But if you don't, sorry for the bang on the microphone, but if you don't, this does a fantastic job of that. I showed it in another video. Uh, but this is a great feature, the track planet with camera ROI. So what that does is if you're not using feature tracking to guide your mount to keep the planet in the center of your ROI, if you have some drift across the chip, you can still use this feature because you can have SharpCap drive the ROI across the chip to keep the planet in the center of the ROI. So that's a, a great feature if you're not currently able to... to guide on the planet. And if that, by the way, if that is the case, if you do have drift across the chip, really take the time to get your polar alignment accurate. And to do that, you can use SharpCap because this feature right here, the polar align, that's worth the price of admission of a SharpCap Pro license all by itself. I'm going to do some other videos at some other point, talk about polar aligning and uh, plate solving and all kinds of great stuff. But uh, right now we're talking about live planetary stacking. And that is a beautiful Jupiter. I'm going to save that. All right. Thanks everybody for watching. Again, live planetary stacking in SharpCap 4.1.